Union Christ Church London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service. Deliverance, healing, restoration and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information please call us on the following number. 0742948718 Or email RevGodwin at DominionChristChurchLondon.co.uk or DominionChristChurch at Yahoo.co.uk Trains and Buses Station Alperton Station, Wembley Central Station, Wembley Park Station, Hanger Lane Station, and Harlesden Station. Welcome once again to the Dominion Christ Church television broadcast. I'm excited to be with you this Saturday evening. I believe that God has got something good for you. This television broadcast is brought to you by the Dominion Christ Church and I am here to represent Pastor Goodwin, a great man of God that God is using in the healing miracle and deliverance ministry and if you have a need you can contact him or contact me the numbers will be on the screen in a minute but I want to tell you about the address of the church it's on your screen now unit 29 Abbey Industrial Estate Woodside Avenue Mount Pleasant Wembley HA01UR Come along to that service. If you live in the London area and you want to go to a church where miracles are taking place, where people are being healed, where people are being delivered, where the power of God is being manifested, then you need to get along to the Dominion Christ Church. If you do not live in the London area, don't worry, we'll still pray for you, we'll still minister to you. There are three telephone numbers on your screen now that you can contact us on and there is someone there waiting to receive your call. You are important to us. You can text us on any one of those numbers, you can email us, you can phone us and speak to us directly. We are waiting to receive your call. Now, I've got a special announcement that I want to make today. We are having a special service, and if you live in the London area, you do not want to miss that service. In fact, if you live outside the London area and you can travel to the church, please do so, because on Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, we are going to be having our Christmas Eve service and we'll be singing carols old and new. The power we are expecting, the power of God to be in that meeting. Well, we know the power of God is going to be in that meeting. Let me give you that address again. It's coming on your screen at the Dominion Christ Church. Abbey Industrial Estate, Woodside Avenue, Mount Pleasant, Wembley, HA01UR. I say it again, Unit 29, Abbey Industrial Estate, Woodside Avenue, Mount Pleasant, Wembley, HA01UR. Please get a pen and paper and make a note of that address so you've got it when we're off the screen. Or you can telephone numbers, you can telephone us and the numbers that are scrolling across your screen and we'll give you more details. But we are, we are expecting the power of God to be in that meeting. What a wonderful time.
time to start Christmas by coming along to that service on Christmas Eve and worshipping the true and the living God. I tell you, God is moving in that church. And if you can get there, make an effort to be there. I am going to read to you a verse of scripture that is found in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2. That is the gospel of Luke chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was born of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of multitude of heavenly hosts praising and saying, Glory be to the God in the highest, and on earth peace, and good will towards men. And it came to pass that the angel of the Lord was gone from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told unto them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered those things which were told to them by the shepherds. I'm going to preach on the subject, five reasons for celebrating the birth of Jesus. Five reasons for celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now, I may not cover all five points because we've only got a short time in this television broadcast, but I'll cover as much as I can. And as I am teaching and as I am speaking to you, I want you to believe God for your miracle. And you can phone any one of those three numbers on your screen now. Somebody is waiting to pray for you. The last number ending 31 is my number. I won't answer it because I'm not here. I'm in the studio, but you can leave a message and I will get back to you. So we're giving five reasons for celebrating the birth of Jesus. Notice I never said celebrating Christmas. I never said celebrating Christmas. I said we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Now from today until Christmas comes, no doubt a thousand times you're going to hear Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, you're going to get your Christmas cards. And there are some people that get upset at this time of year about Christmas. And there are some people that say we shouldn't be celebrating the birth of our Saviour. And it's wrong to have Christmas trees. And they'll be telling us how pagan it all is. And they will get older, Jeremiah chapter 10, and take it out of context to try to prove that it's wrong to celebrate Christmas. Well, I don't believe there is anything wrong in celebrating the birth 
of the greatest person that was ever born. I believe it's right that we should celebrate his birth. The sad thing is, though, at this time of year, among the sec in the secular world, among the ungodly, Jesus is often forgotten. We buy gifts for each other, but we forget about the greatest gift that was ever given. We forget about the purpose of his birth. Can you just imagine if it was my wife's birthday and I bought a present for my son, a present for my family, and the only one that didn't get a gift was my wife. How often do we leave Jesus out of Christmas? It's nothing wrong with celebrating the birth of Christ, but let us make sure that we are focused on the one that was born in Bethlehem and the purpose of Christmas. President Ronald Reagan once said, Christmas can be celebrated in the schoolrooms with pine trees, tinsels and reindeers, but there must be no mention of the man whose birthday is celebrated. There are some people that want to take Jesus out of Christmas. I tell you, friends, if Jesus is taken out of Christmas, then we have no Christmas whatsoever. Now, I know Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. I know that. But that's not important. The fact is, he was born. And we have got two days holiday. On the 25th and the 26th of December, and I can't think of any better way to celebrate that, to use those two days, but to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Why people are using that celebration to get drunk and commit all kinds of abominations. The true Christians, the born-again Christians, will be using that day to celebrate the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we will be celebrating Jesus. I've given you five reasons for celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. One, the very angels in heaven celebrated his birth. If it was wrong to celebrate his birth, why did the angels in heaven celebrate his birth. In Luke chapter 2, verses 13 to 14, we've just read it, and suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. I don't see nothing wrong on December the 25th, even though he wasn't born that day, to say Praise God for Jesus. Thank God for the birth of the greatest person that was ever born. It meant a lot to so many. John Wesley wrote that great hymn, Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn king, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. The only reason that I am reconciled to God today, the only reason that I can be saved, is because Jesus was born in Bethlehem. If he hadn't have been born, we would have no saviour. But he came. Jesus didn't come to give us two days holiday. He came into this well to save us. Jesus came for a purpose. And the Bible says what that purpose was. It says for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. If God allowed the angels to celebrate his birth, why can't you and I celebrate his birth? Or oh, some people say, well, the Christmas tree, the tree is pagan. Let me tell you, no pagan god ever made any tree. Every tree that you see on planet Earth was made by Almighty God. The Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. No pagan god ever made a fir tree or any other fir tree, or any other tree for that matter. 
The Bible says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And I don't see anything wrong with putting a tree in my house. I've got all kinds of plants in my house. There's nothing wrong in decorating it. There's nothing wrong of it whatsoever. Now, if you don't believe in celebrating Christmas, that's okay. I respect that. If you choose not to have a tree, I, I respect that. It doesn't make you any less a Christian. It doesn't make me more of a Christian because I do. I won't criticise in... I won't criticise you for not doing it. Don't criticise me for doing it. I believe that when God sent his angels to celebrate the birth of Jesus, he was showing the world that he wants the birth of his son to be celebrated. That's why he sent angels to do it. I believe that it's right that we celebrate his birth. The second reason that I believe it's important to celebrate his birth is, is because all that we have in the Christian life is due to the one who was born in Bethlehem. If he hadn't have been born, then he could not have lived the perfect life. He could not have lived the sinless life. He could not have died on that old rugged cross for you and me. But because he was born in a born in a stable and because he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil because he was tempted in all ways as we are tempted he was able to die on the cross a sinless and perfect sacrifice and the only sins that Jesus had on him when he went on the cross was our sins he, he that knew no sin became sin he took our sins he became a sin offering. Oh, thank God that I am here today. The only reason that I can be born again is because Jesus was first born of the Virgin Mary. Thank God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Oh, thank God, I celebrate his birth because he, he was born to take away my sins. And the reason that I have this hope inside me today, the reason that if you are a Christian, you are born again, the reason that you have a hope for the future is because of Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we may be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If he had not been born, he could not have died on the cross. Oh, thank God, all the hope that I've got, my mansion in glory, the forgiveness of sins, the hope for eternity, is all because Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago and died on that cross for our sins. The third reason is because all that we have for the future could not have happened unless he had been born. Some people say his death is more important, and I say amen. The centre of the Christian faith is the cross. But if he had not been born, he could not have died on the cross. What future would it be? We may die but if we're in Christ, we know that there is a future resurrection. Or oh, today, the newspapers are full of the bombing that's going on in Syria. It is full of the wars that are taking place around the world. It is full of the threats of terrorism that is a threat in every country. But there is coming a day when murder wars will be no more, will death will be no longer, where ungodliness will not exist, where paedophiles will not exist. There is coming a day when evil will be destroyed, where the devil will be cast into hell, and the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth, even as the waters cover the sea. And it happens because a child was born. All this will come to pass, because a child was born. 
thank God that he was born. And I want to remind you, friends, if you appreciate his birth, then why don't you come along to our Christmas Eve service at the Dominion Christ Church this Christmas Eve, starting 7 o'clock, and let us come together and worship the true and the living God. I believe that the power of God is going to be in that meeting to heal and to deliver. If you live within the London area, make that effort to come along to the address that's coming on your screen. And Unit 29, Abbey Industrial Estate, Woodside Avenue, Mount Pleasant, Wembley, HA01UR. Come along this Christmas Eve. Don't miss that service. I believe that the Shekinah glory is going to be there. The Dominion Christ Church has witnessed the power of God many times. Reverend Goodwin is a man that is mightily used of God in the healing miracle ministry. And he will be there to minister and pray for you. The fourth reason why we celebrate his birth is as a token of our love and our gratitude because of what he is. When I celebrate Jesus, I don't celebrate him for what he was, I celebrate him for what he is. When I celebrate my wife's birthday, my wife was born in the West Indies. She was born in a country called Barbados. And uh, when I celebrate her birth, I don't celebrate her as a baby. I celebrate her as she is now. When somebody celebrates my birthday, when I was a baby, they bought me baby ties. They bought me a rattle. But when they celebrate my birthday, they don't celebrate my birthday as I was then. They celebrate me as I am now. When Jesus was a baby... He never healed anybody. He never worked a single miracle. If we think of Jesus as a baby, we're not going to be healed, we're not going to be delivered, we're not going to be saved. But I've got news for you. That baby grew up. He went about doing good, healing all that oppressed of the devil. When my wife gives me a present, she gives me a present according to what I am now, not according to a baby. And I want to tell you, friend, when we think of Jesus Christ, at the right hand of the Father, the one that conquered hell, the one that conquered sin, the one that made an open show of Prince of Pleasant and Powers. I'm celebrating this Christmas, the one who heals, the one that saves, the one that works miracles. And today, you can receive your healing. You can receive your deliverance. You can receive your miracle because the Jesus that we serve today is no longer a baby. He's the man of God. Please phone any one of those numbers that are coming on your screen. There is someone waiting to pray for you. The last number there is mine. You can leave me a message. I'll get back to you. Any one of those numbers on there, somebody is going to pray for you. Hallelujah. I celebrate my wife because I love her. And the reason I celebrate the birth of Jesus is because I love him. I thank God that it's 2,000 years ago that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank God. Hallelujah. And the fifth reason I celebrate, well, fourth reason I celebrate him, I should say, I celebrate him today because he has taken my sins away. He's delivered me from death and hell. He has defeated the devil. And because of what he is, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The five points, I managed to get all five points in. The fifth reason I celebrate him today is because of what he is doing today. I've got news for your friends. I serve a Jesus that is the same yesterday, today and forever. The the same Jesus that gave sight to blind Bartimaeus. The same Jesus that healed the woman with the issue of the blood. The same Jesus that cleansed the lepers. The same Jesus that made the lame to walk. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. What he did, he's still doing. And the same Jesus that healed others can heal you. The same Jesus that saved me can save you. The same Jesus that saved others can save you. My Bible says that God is no respect. 
specter of persons. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what colour you may be. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor. I want to tell you the same God over all is rich unto all. And the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved from your sickness. You can be saved from your diseases. But most of all, more importantly, you can be saved from your sins. And God can take a hell-bound sinner and make them a heaven-bound saint. And today, friends, listen, when you, you are going to receive many gifts. Some of you may not, but many of you are going to receive many gifts this Christmas. The worst insult that anybody could pay to me is for me to give them, give them a present and I don't take it. If my wife bought me a present and I didn't take it, she would be upset. But how many of you, when you've accepted a gift from your mother and you've accepted the gift from your wife, how many of you have accepted God's gift? God's gift of salvation. It's there for the answer. And you can just call upon him right now. Thank you. You can accept God's gift of salvation right now. Just call upon him. He won't reject you. He came into this world for sinners and you can receive him right now. You wouldn't turn down your wife's gift. You wouldn't turn down your husband's gift. You wouldn't turn down a gift from your children. Why would you turn down the gift? I tell you, friends, when I buy a gift for my wife, I look to see how it's going to benefit her. This tablet I got here was bought for me by my wife. It met a need that I have. I used to, when I used to travel around, I used to take a lot of books. Now I've got all my books on one tablet. All I need to take is this. It met a need in my life. And the, the, great, the greatest gift that you can give someone is one that will meet their need. I want to tell you that God's gift of Jesus Christ can meet every need in your life. It can meet your, it can bring healing. God's gift can bring deliverance. God's gift of Jesus can bring victory into your life. Why don't you receive his gift now? He's waiting to receive you. Are you willing to receive him? All you've got to do is call upon him and just say, God, be merciful unto me. You can telephone those numbers now. Somebody is waiting to pray for you because he lives because he's alive today, he can change every situation. Matthew 18, verse 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, friends, let me just close, but remind you, you please, please, please make a note of it. You don't want to miss it. Write down the address that is coming on your screen right now. You, if you can get to the service tomorrow, come to the Dominion Christ Church service tomorrow or during the week. Anytime during the week, Mondays, we have service. But don't miss our Christmas Eve service. Started 7 o'clock on the 24th of December. Come expecting a miracle. Well, friends, time goes so quickly in this television broadcast and we've now come to the end of our time and so, I won't see you before Christmas. I have a wonderful Christmas. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt speaking and standing in for Reverend Goodwin and saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. In Christ Church, London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service. Deliverance, healing, restoration and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday Service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information please call us on the following number. 0742948 or email 
Rev Godwin at Dominion Christ Church London.co.uk or Dominion Christ Church at Yahoo.co.uk. Trains and Buses Station, Alberton Station, Wembley Central Station, Wembley Park Station, Hanger Lane Station, and Harlesden Station.